told me it wasn't possible. But with a lot of hard work and determination and help from my family, I made it. My name is Jacob Mulaney. It is Utrecht that weer the leiding neemt. Jacob Mulaney. Het was een spits waar uh, tegenstanders echt uh, bang voor uh, waren. Bij iedere voorzet met, met zijn kopkracht en zijn lengte was hij gevaarlijk. Uh, maar geen verfijnde techniek. Dat zie je ook denk ik wel in, in zijn doelpunten terug waar hij... Uh, Makkelijke kansen uh, mist en, en, en vaak uit een uh, onmogelijke hoek wel weet te scoren. En dat was wel typisch Jacob. Op de momenten dat het net heel goed ging met hem, werd hij op een of andere manier altijd uitgedaagd met een, een teleurstelling. En uh, daarin zie je vaak hoe sterk een persoon is en hoe sterk Jacob een lijn is. Ja, dat was iemand, ja, ja, ik zeg het één uit de duizend. Ja, ik kijk daar wel tegenop en, en dat was natuurlijk sowieso een indrukwekkend. Een indrukwekkende speler, maar ook uh, een indrukwekkend persoon. Een mens, dan heb je toch wel gauw door of, of hoe die qua normen en waarden in elkaar zit en wat diegene doet. Dus ik heb niet exact idee van wat hij allemaal uh, uh, uitspookte, maar ik wist wel dat hij hard op de goede plek had. Dus dan ja, ben je van nature wel, heb je daar wel respect voor. Ja. Right now we're going uh, straight to my mom's house. So this is where it all began. She's, she's a lot into football now. She's a huge, huge Barcelona fan. And this is when we went to Barcelona. She didn't even notice much, apart from where's the stadium. Let's go to the stadium. And so it was all the stadium tour, buy everything. I'm sure Barcelona made some money from us that day. It's like, it's just, But the most surprising thing is she bought a piece of grass. That was shocking for us. Like we said, okay, mom, I think now it's really a bit extreme right now. But yeah, it's, it's mothers, I guess, when your son gets into football, then all of a sudden you're really, really interested in it. So she came around. She wasn't so much into football, but she came around. When he was going to school, just from school, he would just come home running. He would throw away his bag and go to play for the other side. Ah, Jacob, come back. Sit here. First school. When you're done with your school work, then you can go and play football. No, man, I'm coming, I'm coming. I just said, no, no, Jacob, you have to come back. So I have to bring him back, sit him down, do his homework. Then he can go and play football. Every day. And then when he grew up, he was telling mommy, you know this football will take me somewhere. I said, but education first. You have to be educated to do whatever you want to do. If you don't do well, you go back to school until you do something good. Then you can do whatever you want to do in your life. Because I knew that education is very important in somebody's life. Hi! Good to see you. Back home. So that's why he used to run around, make sure where, where there was football, he would run there and play with the, the, the friends. Especially there's a big ground behind. That's why he used to run. Every time you miss him, just go there to the playground, you'll find him there playing. And you know, it wasn't a, a football, they would make something with plastics, then they would, they would start playing, with, thinking that they, but in their mind it was football, it was a ball. But uh, it wasn't a boy. They would just pick up plastic papers and make uh, something round so that they can kick around. Yeah, but yeah, but that's yeah, that's also because we were having more fun with it than the actual boys. Like Whoa. even football boots, because most of the times we were playing without football boots here. So for me, when that came out, that affected me because then that portrays um, most African footballers in that sense that okay. 
you know, we're helping him out. We're giving him a contract, helping him out because I understand he needs to feed his family and everything when that's not really the case. You're not helping me out. I don't like uh, pity. I don't like uh, people being feeling sorry for you because you're from Africa. Yeah, that's why for all the we then have as Nederlanders. But it is indeed a different story. Jacob kwam uit een, uit een goede familie uh, uh, die zichzelf uh, uitstekend kon onderhouden. Dus wat dat betreft is, de, uh, ja, is dat een, een voordeel, denk ik. En met, misschien met name uh, uh, door de mensen buiten hem om. Uh, uh, zo hebben wij eigenlijk nooit naar hem gekeken. Uh. Most of the guys uh, we played with at my mom's house outside, um, it's people who came in, uh, but they came in from other neighborhoods. So most of them didn't have shoes. They, you couldn't play with shoes. If you're playing with shoes, you'd be the odd one out. Especially if, you, if you're using not just shoes, but if you're using football boots, most of them will say, no, no, we're not playing with you because you'll probably step on us and you hurt us. So. And because you really want to play, for me, it didn't phase me. For me, it was just something, yeah, okay, whatever, shoes off. I really, now I think about it now, I really managed to just blend in with everyone. And also my parents didn't, didn't stop me in a sense of saying, oh no, look, what you're doing, you're going to hurt your feet and everything. No, they were just like, look, he's a child, look at all those other kids, they're also the same. Yeah, it's an experience which is very different because after you start getting, obviously you are playing, you, you get the balls now, dad is buying balls almost every, I don't know how many days you have to buy a ball. <laughs> Because yeah. the ball are playing with you, play it. Sometimes you kick it into the neighbor's house. The neighbor gets upset because it's a Sunday. Get, get them back. Yeah, he's trying to rest, <laughs> so he keeps the ball. You have to run home, get another ball, go there, try and call my brother or my sister. One of the adults say, can you please go and ask for the ball for us? And it says, uh, yeah, we're just, we're just enjoying it for us. So this is also inside the, my parents' house where you just take the ball and you kick it against the wall as much as possible. Obviously, from time to time, uh, I remember we broke a couple of windows, like these windows here. Yeah, you broke them a couple of times, or the ball going to the neighbors. You hear the neighbors get angry. Sometimes you don't get your ball back, but you always, yeah, you just have fun because you enjoy it. You kick it, you get tired. So you hear my mom shout to, ah, no, 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 everyone out, 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 like go play on the field. If you don't do it next, you hear my dad's voice, then, yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's just one of those things you remember where you just kick it, you're just playing because you like kicking it against the wall. Or just getting stuff off you. Yeah, not yet, kid, but you finished everything you had to do in the house. And yeah, maybe it's a school day, so there are no kids outside to play football with. Then you just come here and literally just spend an hour just kicking it here, pretending this is the goal. Or, yeah, you get it sometimes, would throw it, you, th you just throw it up the roof and wait for the ball to come back. <laughs> Whenever it comes, yeah. Should I just try stop it, shoot? So you do a lot of things. And at times would play the same way, but you'd have one goalkeeper by the gate. So you pretend the gate is the goal, but yeah, shooting it against the gate. Yeah, I think, yeah, you can listen to the sound. It's very annoying. That's, uh, that gets the parents very angry. <laughs> when Jacob was a child, he was a very naughty child. <laughs> very, very naughty, very funny. And he really wanted to be into a lot of sports. He would do motocross. He was actually, he would take anything up that would just come his way. I think the, the little one you see extremely small. <laughs> That's my younger brother. I'm on the middle. And you have my older brother, George. I think he's looking like he's never seen a horse before. <laughs> and then you have my sister. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's us. We'd go to South Africa a lot for holidays. Every holiday. I think my dad would take us almost every three months. We'd go on a holiday, close school, or gone for two weeks. So, so. And they would, when we were in South Africa, they would just be going around in the garages looking for, for, for motor bikes, oh, yeah. for boots for them. Every time he would buy new things for them. <laughs> My 
my late father really wanted my three brothers to be into sports because he had a motorbike himself. So he was going with them as well. So he put that into them. Motocross was more, yeah. Motocross was more. We have seen those trophies there. He got them from motocross. He was, he was always coming the first one. They would go for competition in Lusaka. He would be the first one in his group. Yeah, she always, she, yeah, she always thought it was dangerous, but with my dad it was, yeah, just just go, just uh, try. Yeah, I fell a couple of times, obviously. Mm. Got injured, I, I landed, uh, hit the ground, the helmet snapped my head. I had sand all over my mouth and <laughs> blood coming out, and just, yeah, crying. So we had to rush him to the hospital. Yeah, but you just go, you get back and... And tomorrow is there. Yeah, tomorrow you're back again, because you learn new things. Jacob as a child was very competitive. I could say he was a natural sportsman because he played a lot of sports. And in each sport that he played, he was always excelling in that sport. I loved doing athletics. I was 100 meters, I was really fast. High jump, I could do that really well. Long jump, triple jump, you name it. As long as it involved a bit of running and skipping or jumping, I was, I was in it. So for me, I think right now in my school, I still hold the high jump record and I still hold the long jump record, which I always check because now my, um, my brother's kids, they're at that school. The oldest one, Faith, she's there. But I always check with her to say, okay, has anyone broken this record yet? And she's like, no, 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 of course not. But that was way back and it's still there up to now. So it was really, yeah, it was really something special, something I like doing. I put a lot of effort into it. I don't know, I think it's just a gift that he had from a young age. Yeah, I think a gift of God, yeah. Every time he'd come back from school, he'd always sneak out of the house and um, go play soccer without my dad even knowing that he was doing it. But my dad was very strict on that. My dad told him education, must come first before anything. Yeah, it was a struggle for him, yeah, because sometimes he would jump on a taxi and go play soccer. <laughs> and my dad would get very upset. You know, it came as a surprise because everyone just, the family just thought of him playing football as just a part-time sport and a social sport. So it became serious when he started trying out for the local teams. I think that's when we as a family knew that he was determined to excel in that sport. So it wasn't not, it was just, yeah, I would call it, I would call it uh, adventurous. I tried uh, a lot of things. I wanted to know a lot of things, so I was very curious with things. So for me, sometimes a no didn't really mean no. He just had that passion of soccer, and he would tell us, he would always say, one day I'll be a superstar. And you know, we'd all laugh and say, nah, not you. And one day, trust me, he, when, he's, when he would be gone, and my dad would ask, where's Jacob? And we just, he's gone out. My dad would yell at all of us. And when Jacob would come back, my dad would still yell at him. And he would say, one day, I'll be a soccer star. You guys watch me one day. I you know, we never believe it, but now he's a soccer star. His dream came true, yeah? Yes, I was an adult, I was 18 by then and everything. But in our house, you're, nev you're never an adult. Like, you still can't make your own decisions because it was always that way. You have to respect your parents and everything. It's a, yeah, it's a, maybe it's a cultural thing or it's just something different. So I knew no matter what happens, if I don't manage to get to break through this year, I'm 100% going to university in next year, and then it will become complicated because then you can't do both. So it's, uh, for him it was, yeah, he gave me the opportunity, and my mom, they allowed me to do it, and the more they saw me growing, the more they helped me towards it. Yeah, so where we are, this is, uh, Everywhere, this is where I started playing professional football, after sport. 
he is uh, one of the owners of the club and this is the coach, one of the coaches I had to help me out. Everything looks uh, a bit different now, but it's all the same. You see the people are here. It's a club with just full of determination. You have to be motivated. Yeah, for others, it's not something pretty, but for us, this is, for us, this is something we need. It's, it gave us a lot of pride. Every game, you see these hills here. It will be full of people. I remember Kalusha, the old PSV player, would sit up here. The mayor would be sitting up here. So it's, uh, yeah, for me coming back here, is, it's a good thing. You had the coach and everything, but because there were so many kids, it was more, yeah, they saw a lot of potential, what you could become, not what I was. What I was at the moment was, uh, yeah, three, three grades be below everyone, the level everyone was at, three levels below, or three or four levels, but, then after, through wanting to learn and pushing yourself, you eventually catch up and you eventually surpass them and become even way better than them. I was trying, I was trying to introduce him again. I know you know him by paper. You have, some of them you have never met him. But you play for Afri Sports and you also played for Afri Sports like you guys. Then also you went now to, to play in France and then to Holland and then to, to China. It's good that he has come, so he just wanted to say one or two things to you guys, Jacob. Yes, shine, guys. No, in a, I'm, I'm happy to be back, obviously. So now I'm saying from you guys, it's a chance for you to change not only your lives, Nabafiashi, Nabashani, to get a better life. And he is presenting the opportunity to you. So for me, I think I can only encourage you guys to say it's very important, everything you do it, you're doing, do it 100% and stay determined. It's okay. If you don't play, it even helps you to push even more. Ask him how many times I didn't play when I arrived. <laughs> but after, I'm still here. Right now, I'm one of the Zambians who has been abroad for the longest time playing professional football. Most of the guys I was playing with, some of them didn't even go to Europe. Sometimes it's not luck, it's about hard work. How much do you want it? When you go home, how much do you want to play football? I had a lot who, who thought I couldn't do it because I was a kid who really no one taught how to play football. It was literally more of a sense of it's just something, uh, I would say God given, it's just something you know how to do. You learn how to do it yourself. But there was a club that um, I did go there to play. And I remember the coach yeah, saying, no, 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 it's not possible. As in, yeah, you, you really, he can't play. He doesn't even know how to stop the ball in his chest and those type of things. I understand, they're, they're looking for someone who's already ready and everything. So it didn't phase me as much. But in the end, when the clubs did come back and wanted me to now join them in the super division, then I said no. I said, no, I would rather just play in the third division because I was already with the national team. There was nothing I was going to gain by joining a Super League team. The main objective is go to the uh, Super League team and go to the national team, then go abroad. So I skipped the step of playing in the Super League straight from there and I left. Wij waren al aan de voorbereiding begonnen. Wij zaten op trainingskamp op Hoendelo. En toen uh, kwam in één keer Moulenga hadden ze gekocht. En of ik dan maar iets wilde regelen, een persconferentie en, uh, met, met champagne en een, een dingetje erbij. En dat hebben we toen in Hoendelo gedaan. Ja, maar we zijn ongeveer samengekomen. Want als ik me goed herinner, stonden we met vier op de foto als presentatie. Dat was hij, ik, Nana Azar en Dries Mertens. En ik geloof daarna ook nog Ricky van Wolfswinkel. Willem van Hameging was net weg en toen kwamen wij en daar, daar, het, het was niet top. Het was gewoon, er ging een hele aparte sfeer en dat moest omgedraaid worden met kwaliteit. Maar de, kwaliteit is niet alles. Je moet, om een groep te veranderen moet je ook heel vaak positieve mensen hebben. En ja, dan haal je met Chamberlain de juiste persoon binnen. 
It was a good and a bad thing because we were excited for him, but then again we were scared because he was going to a completely different environment and he was very young at that time and he had never lived on his own, so he was going to live on his own. So obviously the parents were always concerned about his well-being outside. Yeah, of course I was scared. It's, uh, you're a kid, you're excited, but you're scared because the ultimate thing was I always pictured myself uh, going abroad, going to live abroad and after coming back, but also just wanting the experience of what is it like to be outside of Zambia? What is it like to have that sort of life, you know? Van Wolleswinkel, de aankoop, een van de vele aankopen bij Utrecht als diepste spits. Mertens daarachter, Azaren en Molenga, het zijn namen die u nog niet zeggen. Maar ze beloven veel. En het is een prachtige treffer, wilde ik zeggen, waar uh, Keijat op de paal geslagen met het hoofd door Molenga. Pech voor Utrecht. Er was iemand die super snel was en begin dacht, wow, wat een bezem, wat een snelheid. Maar zijn aannames die sloegen helemaal nergens op. Dat ging heel moeilijk in het begin, heel stroef. Dus ik weet nog in het begin dat er heel veel zeiden van, wow, dat gaat lastig hoor. Het is niet echt een Nederlandse speler. In het begin is er zeker twijfel geweest van, wat hebben we nu in huis gehaald, weet je? Dat is weer een miskoop. Mertens. En nu zit de bal er nog niet in. Hoe is het mogelijk? Ik kan me voorstellen dat hij ook daar tegenaan hikte in het begin. Uh, dus ja, ik heb het wel meegekregen dat hij spits was, maar niet scoorde. Hij did talk about it in the beginning because he said he was still trying to adapt to the system of playing and how they go. But it was a bit different from how they used to do it in France. So he was used to come a bit frustrated, but we used to support him and tell him it would, it would take a bit of time before he adjusted and settled in. It took really long. It took I don't I don't even remember how many how many games it took. But it took a while because everything you were doing it didn't seem to work. Like you hit the ball, it goes off the post. Uh, you shoot it, the ball goes just wide. You miss it, and you're thinking, what what's what's going on here? What's happening? How how long before the ball actually goes in? But uh, you yeah, like I said, you just keep on going. You keep on working hard. Some supporters yeah will be curious, but there's, there's one thing. Um, with me and something I, uh, something I learned about football with strikers. You'd rather have someone who always uh, is creating chances and gets in a position to score, because you know the guy who's always getting in that position, it's just a matter of time before that ball starts going in. But the guy who's never in that position and won't get in that position, then it's a complete waste, because most are afraid to get into that position because they don't know what to do when it happens or they're afraid of the result in case they miss. But I just developed a mind of, look, I miss or I score, I have two options. What's, what's going to happen? Nothing. And I have a higher chance of scoring than missing because that's what you work on, that's what you practice on. And with strikers, once you hit the phase where you start scoring, it just keeps on going. Okay, as a striker, if you don't score for a while, people start to think, ah, what did we get? But they saw the the work input was very good. He was doing a lot of work, chasing after balls and also making it tough for defenders. So it was just a matter of time that he will start uh, scoring and he did. Lenski, Morenka, Messi de Rutoff, Russi Kukkerwelli. It was a quality. It was not that the thing that we sought to be able to attack. Because he held every ball by and that so players met zoveel kracht en snelheid zijn goud waard voor je team. En dat uh, naarmate het jaren werd dat alleen maar meer duidelijk. Ze zijn, zijn toch sowieso heel kritisch in Utrecht. Uh, als je binnengehaald wordt, dan moet je er gelijk uh, 20 in schieten, bij wijze van spreken, weet je. Maar dat was bij hem niet zo. En in het begin ook niet zo. Maar hij was wel lastig voor de verdediging van de tegenpartij. En hij was wel aanwezig. En toen ging hij ook nog scoren. En, en wat ik zei net, van, hij kon grote kansen missen. Maar hij kon ook geweldige ballen erin schieten. Ik, ik, Ik zei al, ik heb een omhaal dat hij van de 16 meter een bal in de kruising schiet. Dat je denkt van, wat, wat doet die nou, weet je? Mertens. Titel kan er niet bij. Moelenke kan er wel bij. Het staat 3-1. Ja, ik heb er wel zoveel momenten. Ik kan niet even... Ik kan niet echt een. Alles was gewoon perfect voor mij. Niet alleen toen ik hier kwam, maar... 
even just my whole time there, we had a lot of fun with everyone there, getting to know everyone, like learning the culture. Uh, Fuka boy trying to force everyone to speak Dutch, that was funny. <laughs> but, but everyone, but we ended up with most of the people actually speaking English in the dressing room, and even the Dutch guys speaking a lot of English. And of course, meet Nana, because that's where we met and we became like family. Up to this day, we're like, we're like just brothers. Het alleen heel erg jammer bij hem, wanneer hij net op dreef stond, dat er altijd iets gebeurde. Molenga, lanceert zich. Oh, that was a tough blow. Getting injured was... Uh, I, I never had something that big. I didn't even know about, about ACLs. I had no idea what it was. I was in shock and I was in tears almost every night. I couldn't understand uh, why, why it happened. I even got angry with God at one, I, at one point. I was, I was very angry with him. Say, yeah, but why would you let this happen? If I'm always uh, helping out people, I'm always doing this. So why are you going to let this happen to me and everyone else who doesn't even pray, doesn't even bother about helping people, are all fine. He could call, call you three, four times in one day. And he would call another family member three, four times in one day. Then you know that even though it doesn't tell us, but he's, there's a sense of loneliness in it. For me, it was not easy because then you, most of the time he's not around and then you have to sort of like look out for your own selves and see, okay, what is going to happen next and how good is he going to come back. When you get to training also, you start to think, ah, who is going to make me laugh? Chai! Yeah. Looking at all that dirt. Come on, bro. Sheesh. I believe that you were a bad guy called Basie yeah, you know, they always make fun of us. Yeah. <laughs> Especially our coach, Jan. I think he likes us both so much that he knows that when one is not there, it's not easy for one. So at one point, he starts to ask me, ah, your girlfriend is not around. <laughs> your girlfriend is... <laughs> it's too small. Five to six. Yeah, it, can, it can be my size. Yeah, we were echt twee personen die elkaar super hard nodig hadden. Want je komt van een andere cultuur. Um, en ja, dat was een klik. Want ze zijn niet samen. Ja, ik denk dat ze samen zijn gekomen, maar ze kenden elkaar voor Utrecht nog niet. En uh, dat heb je niet altijd onderling. Soms voetballers die lopen zo langs elkaar door en zij kwamen bij wijze van spreken altijd hand in hand binnen. Everything we start to sink. I huh? We start to sink because uh, we go sink what? Because there was water coming. Go go go. No, if you do it too fast, then we we'll go in another. There we go again. <laughs> again. I was injured, coming back, and then I thought, okay, I will come back and meet him, and then. When I was coming in, he was going out, so it was... Oh, that's the time you had your back thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was really, really a bad moment for me because at least one of us should be there to keep, keep the legacy going, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> to keep the flame burning, yeah. The injury, I think it affected him a lot. But we as a family tried to give him all the support we could because he was out for a very long time and he wasn't sure if he was going to play again. So there was always that question of maybe this is the end of my career. But he believed in God. He'd always say, despite what I'm going through, I believe in God. I will make it. Good morning. Good morning. It is morning. Put up a cheer up first, man. What's up? <laughs> 
Uh, once again, we bless God and honor God for his goodness and mercy that God has been faithful in our lives. Like in God's sense, after praying, it just came to me sort of like very clear to say the problem is you, ask, you keep on asking why it happened and, you, and, you, and not like what am I supposed to learn from it. Juist zeg maar na tegenslag komt hij altijd nog, uh, nog beter en nog uh, succesvoller zeg maar, terug. Uh, en dat heeft hem wel ook weer heel veel kracht gegeven. En ook wel weer uh, met zijn geloof ook vooral. Want het zijn wel dingen die, ja, voor sommige voetballers is dat het einde. Maar uh, hij is er gelukkig wel overheen gekomen. In the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And praise the Lord. Stand in the house of the Lord. We get frustrated so much in life, and everything, nothing will, will ever go your way. Like what I was saying, I always say with Patricia and my family, say, yeah, if you want to make God laugh, make your own plans, because that's just life. Nothing, nothing will go the way you plan it. Everything will flip, everything will change, but how can you handle it, and what are you supposed to learn from it? So for me, when that happened, then I took a pause and realized, say, oh, Lord, look, look at, look at where you are, look at what you've done, and look at how much you have. There are people who are worse off than you right now. All that's happening is you're just taking a pause. You're taking a pause and you'll be back, so don't worry about it. And from then on, for me, it was just, it was easy. We want to thank you, we want to honor your name. Because you are our God, you reign. Control of our lives. In you we have our being. In you we move. In you, Lord, our lives are sustained by you and by your spirit. Even by your dreams. Nam goed. Maar we, ja, we weten. Ik weet niet hoeveel later dat was, maar in de wedstrijd tegen Ajax thuis. Het gebeurt dus weer. Weer een kruisband. En wat ik dan heel bijzonder vond. Want ja, ik, ik, ik heb daar verder niet zoveel verstand van, maar hij ging gewoon door. En schiet vlak voor rust nog een bal binnen met, met een, een kapotte knie. Hoe sterk die man wel niet is, weet je. Hij ging gewoon nog door. En hij, hij wilde na de rust wilde hij nog doorspelen ook. Maar ja, dat gaat dus niet. Als je kruisband kapot is, dan, dan gaat dat dus niet. Ja, heel bijzonder. Ja, dat, dat was wel heel zonde. Want, uh... Volgens mij stond hij toen ook wel in de belangstelling waarbij andere clubs, uh, uh, met name Engeland, zou fantastisch voor hem geweest zijn, denk ik. Ja, goed, uh, uiteindelijk is hij in de kern wel wat een, speler, of wat een sporter uh, hier in Utrecht graag ziet. Dus hard werken, uh, uh, nooit opgeven en dat is wat hij deed. Ja, dat is kenmerkend. En volgens mij was hij bij de tweede uh, kruis, was hij ook mega snel weer terug. Ja, dat is ook weer uh, zo kunnen, met een reden. center of town of Kitwe. This basically was the main road of the town and this is where my dad's store is. So from this store um, all the way down to here, he owns all this place. This is where the butcher was and yeah, this is where he did all his business. When um, he passed on, it was very sad for everybody. Um, he passed on in South Africa after having cancer. That was in 2012, seven months or eight months of cancer and he died. It was very sad for, for all of us, actually. I think what, what affected him the most is he didn't have the chance to spend a lot of time with him. The time that he spent with him was limited because in reference to, it was one of the games that he was supposed to play for the national team. And that was when my father was in hospital. So he actually said he was not going to play. And there was a lot of talk about why he's not going to play and why this and why that. But unfortunately, it was just a few months after that game, then my father passed on, and then that's when most people realized, oh, this is why he didn't want to play, because he wanted to go and spend time with his father. So this is, used to be my dad's office. Yeah, every time you get in here, it's a bit, I don't come here so often. It's a bit emotional, because you see him, he was always there. Yeah, brings back a lot of memories. It still left a big mark in his life, but I think he's at a stage where he's accepted it. 
and moved on with life. But he still holds an imp he still plays an important role in his life. This was him. Yeah, would look alike. This was when he graduated because he went to theological college. So he was there for like four years. He studied a lot of things and uh, Bible things and everything. And he also had to study Greek, I think. Yeah. So after that, <laughs> that's why he was very hard on education. He kept on trying to learn things and study. So it's a really different type of thing. I'll have to hang this if I can manage. Yeah, my wife hangs the things at home. Now I'm looking really hopeless here. Yeah. Voila. My father had a great influence on all of us, actually, on all of us. He was really there for us. He really guided us and he really showed us that to be humble to a lot of people and to help out a lot of people. He had that passion and the passion is still in us. We love to help out a lot of people. Yeah, treat ev everyone as the same. I don't care who you are. Everyone deserves respect. Everyone deserves the same because at the end of the day, you came with nothing. When you die, you're going to leave with nothing. The only thing that's left is the memories about you is how did you treat people? Will people still respect you? How did you help others? Did you give others an opportunity in life? Did you give? Did you make people smile? Did you make people happy? It seems like small things, but giving someone hope is a really, really big thing. teaching my children to give because I know that if you give, God will bless you more. Because God gave his only son so that you can have life, life in abundance. So I've been telling my children, whoever lives in my house has to learn to give because I know that there is a blessing in giving. If you don't give, God will never bless you. You have to give. Yeah, my feeling is uh, it's emotional, it's sad, it's hard to describe. Uh, what you see when you see the kids, like you see the kids now, it's very difficult, you know? So for me, I think it's a point where I have to work hard, I have to do more with the people I know, with the influence I have. I think for me, it's the minimum I can do is, I know we help a lot, but yeah, I think we have to help a lot more because there are a lot of basic things needed. And if you see what she is doing, like I said, I'm almost in tears seeing how the kids are living, but they are off the streets, they get them, they bring them. These kids have no hope at all. I'm glad I help out and yeah, it also pushes me to work harder so I can help out even more. I mean, we have the essentials, I have the essentials. They need it more than I do. Mooi mens. Voor hem is niet alleen voetbal belangrijk. Ik weet dat ik hier, ik kan me niet helemaal voor de geest houden welk initiatief dat was, maar dat er ook hier in Utrecht, dat er, uh, of dat nou voor Mia was of voor supportersactie, ik weet niet, maar in ieder geval ja, was er een, een, een anonieme bijdrage en uh, ja, dat ik weet waar, uit welke hoek dat kwam en ik weet dat hij dat volgens mij niet aan de grote klok wil hangen, maar ja, al dat soort uh, dingetjes en dat is een beetje een stille, stille helper eigenlijk, daar kom, misschien kan je hem zo wel een beetje omschrijven. Yeah, obviously it's important to have money, but then I reach a point where I don't. I, I'm not going to live with all this money. It's not. There are so many other people who need it. I, I don't. I don't need so much. I'm happy. Obviously, I'll buy nice things. I'm not stupid. I'm young. I want my family to be good. But apart from that, uh, we were taught from my father the important thing is help others. Yeah. It's not about yourself. Don't be selfish. And I think that also played a role actually in my football. Because I, I have a type of thing that's not selfish for strikers, which is very unusual. Because everyone, coaches told me, no, you have to be a bit more selfish. And I said, no, I can't. I can't be that. Look there. That is last go over there. Yes, there. And the other one, that side. There. 
there. Yeah? Or does he? Brings in the crocs. Jacob! Oh, 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 oh. It's a ball! Jacob Mulega got for Zambia! As soon as the national team walks in, everyone goes crazy. Yeah, I have goosebumps all over. You don't even know what to do. <laughs> it motivates you. But then after, once they put you in, you start going. First 10 minutes, you score. Yeah, you calm down a bit. And all of a sudden, you go from nothing to yeah, a national hero. So it goes very fast. There, then your whole life changes. Everything changes. The life for your family changes. People have more respect. Where you'll be running, huh? <laughs> David! <laughs> That's not football. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! Lopa, 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 lopa. <laughs> no, hey, Lavi. <laughs> you have to learn. Come on. Let's go. Football! <laughs> It's okay, you take another sport. You take another sport. <laughs> when you have a kid, all of a sudden everything change. Priorities change. It's yeah, it's different. It's you care less about everything else. And yeah, I thank God every day for him, my wife. Yeah, they're both Dutch. He he probably understands more Dutch than English. So yeah. It's a it's a good thing, and for him as well, now we're here, he gets to meet everyone, the whole family. It's something that's important for him. Hopefully, I can teach him the values, the right values, the way I was taught. <laughs> well, that seems like him saying, ha, try, yeah? Huh? 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 It's very nice to see him as a father, because I saw that with my neighbors and nephews that he can be very good with children. Uh, and it's now also very nice to see him as a father, to see how schattig and lief he met, uh, met David omgaat. Uh, en ja, ik denk dat hij een soort van nog meer drive heeft gekregen om, ja, om nog steeds beter te worden en uh, nog meer te doen. En met, ze, uh, ja, met zijn uh, investeringen hier, met de huizen, om er echt voor te zorgen dat, uh, ja, dat David een geweldig leven kan krijgen. This is uh, more of the investments, property investments, because football will come to an end. And you have to know how you're going to feed your family. And especially, yeah, you know, we're used to earning certain amounts, which is by God's grace is good. But after football, things change so fast and you have to adjust so fast. So I think it's very important to just plan well for football players, have everything in line. Like for me now, I have all these people, you employ people, you give people jobs, it's important. You Not know, just to think about yourself. Yeah, so for me, when I stand here, I look at all this, I look from where I came from, the field where I was playing, like I was speaking to the kids. Yeah, it's something I never imagined. I, I sit and I thank God every night. I pray every night because I know this is something really hard to achieve. So I could have never, ever, ever imagined to be in this state. That's why for me it's really, really important to help everyone and to keep on learning. Jacob had altijd een visie voor ogen en Jacob had altijd uh, zijn weg uitgestippeld. Hij was iemand die eigenlijk heel bewust was van het leven buiten voetbal. En ik weet zeker dat hij daardoor zijn keuze heeft gemaakt om een andere stap te maken. Ik denk dat het niks met Utrecht te maken heeft, maar puur met het gevoel van waar hij naartoe wil gaan. possibility of staying with you, Trey. But then I think it was just time. It was just time for me. I had to I had to move on. I had to go do something else. Yeah, now a lot of things have happened. I went to China for the last five years, but yeah, basically still in Holland. My wife is Dutch. My kids are Dutch. Home is yeah, it's where the heart is. It's where you feel comfortable. So for me, that's the place I'm comfortable with. Yeah, and that's Utrecht for me. I try and get time to go to Utrecht, but I also wanted to space it out because, yeah, whilst I'm playing, I didn't want to get too much into when I'm back, uh, 
having a really hard feeling of I need to go back to Utrecht and all that stuff and knowing, yeah, maybe it's not possible. So from my part, it's just they've been there longer than I have. I've come into a culture and I just try and understand them. But I understand for every fan it, would, it is frustrating to always finish, um, to like to have never been first or won the league. I don't know about it, but maybe I'm a dreamer. I'm one of those people. But for me, I'll try and grow my own business as much as possible and help out Utrecht. If I have to find a way where I can sponsor them and eventually owning a percentage of the club and just trying to install the same culture, trying to bring back, uh, give hope to others and everyone in Utrecht, the same thing they've given to me. Fox